Hey John here. This is a really quick little episode. Let's talk a little bit about vias and these polygon fills on the board here. Now, the reason you'd normally fill up the copper on your board like this, you got two reasons. One is just thermal issues. If you build a board and you don't fill this whole surface with copper, and you have some areas copper, some not. What will happen is, over uh, as temperature changes, the copper will, will expand and shrink at a different rate than the FR4, or the fiberglass will. So let me go over here. This button on the left, there's a uh, the, the filled areas, and then there's button over here that looks the same thing. Notice this one says add a filled zone. This one says show the filled zones, hide the, uh, the filled zones. If you click this, what it's really doing is you can still see these outlines up here. The filled zones are there, but it just shuts off the image. It doesn't draw them. So you can sort of see uh, the top and bottom of your PC board and see what's going on. If we look at this, if we didn't have any filled zones, first of all, we'd have to connect all the grounds together anyway, because right now they're not connected and the board won't work. So one of the benefits is we have a filled zone. It connects our grounds. The other one is, like I said, thermal. If you build a board like this and put a bunch of copper on just the top, you don't put any in the back, temperature changes, it's going to curl up and down like a Pringles potato chip, and it will be a problem. There's another issue. When they make a board, what do they really do? Do they cover the whole board with copper and then etch away the copper that's gone with acid? Well, that's one way to do it. And if they do that, they're etching a lot of copper away. And they're using a lot of acid and creating a lot of nasty chemicals. If you actually have this thing fully poured and you, you have the pores turn on and so on, what's it now doing? It only etches away just a little bit in here. So it turns out this is actually more efficient for a manufacturer to leave all that on there. Plus, since you have a very even coating of copper on both the top and the bottom, the entire thing is very consistent and it won't curl up like a potato chip when the temperature changes because the bottom one will constrict and the top one at the same time it'll all kind of cancel itself out so that's one of the benefits right the other one like I said is the ground plane now when you're using this as a ground plane just to connect the grounds together uh, one of the issues is where do the electrons really go and you get into looking at the theory of how electrical stuff works and why current flows where it flows and all this stuff you're gonna find out that the current's gonna flow out this regulator in here into the circuit and come back on this ground and when it comes back on this ground it's gonna wanna flow very much next to the positives that went out so it turns out they're gonna wanna flow along the edge of this trace and along the opposite way of their their little neighbors flowing out here so it's going to go up it's going to come back and they're going to actually be against each other in here when it gets to the regulator it's going to flow all the way back here and then it's going to have to flow around and get down there or at least it's going to want to some of the electrons of course will go on the other side of the board and flow back underneath here and get back that way the point is this capacitor is actually a filter capacitor. It needs to be able to supply current under load instantaneously and so on. So normally what you would do when you're going to put a capacitor down there, you're going to grab a via and you're going to put some on here. I was once told by you know an old hat, an old gray beard engineer, that this is the way you want to do this. If you have a ground plane underneath your board, every time you have a ground, you want to put vias around these things like this. You might want to go ahead and put one right here, too. That's fine. What you don't want to put one is underneath a part. Remember that this right here is a capacitor. All right, if I click on the fabrication or the courtyards, I can see the lines that say, here's the outer area of these parts. A little bit better way to see this. You don't want to put traces through underneath parts. It's okay for a ground plane to be under there, but you don't want to put a regular signal trace under here, and you don't want to put a via under there either. It's just too close a clearance. You don't want to do that. But you do want to kind of put them around here so that this capacitor not only is connected to the ground plane on the top of your board, it's also very well connected to the one on the bottom. 
And again, this board is not critical to do this. It'll work either way. You'll probably never even know the difference. But as you get into higher quality systems with lower tolerance for screw ups, you want to put little vias around here like this uh, next to your, uh, your power and your grounds to make sure that these parts are well connected to both of the two ground planes that I have in this design. Now, I've been indiscriminately throwing these vias everywhere. Be careful. <laughs> Look at the other side of your board and make sure if there's traces and stuff down here, you didn't accidentally just short it out against a trace. Now, now uh, this will, will warn you of that if that ever happens. Uh, so, it, it shouldn't be a problem. And it also will try not to put one there. Let's do one on purpose. Oops, escape here. Go back to the front. First of all, Let's do a quick design rule check. Everything's good. Let's check the unconnected things. Okay, everybody's fine. All right, now let's mess this up. Let's put a via right here. First of all, it doesn't know what to do with it. it uh, it's connected to the top on this net, which is the power output of this regulator. But it, it also connects to the bottom plane. The bottom plane, as you know, is ground, which is why these are all labeled ground. I've now physically connected your uh, positive voltage supply and shorted it out to ground. That's not what you want to do. If this doesn't catch it, then there's probably a problem with my configuration. So, the, oh, it just did catch it. My zone is out of date. If I refill the zone, all's well. Why? Because it knows that this shouldn't be connected to the ground plane in the, in the bottom zone. Now this via is a via to nowhere. Which is, yeah, <laughs> there's got to be a song in there by the Eagles or something. Anyway, I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to hit B, go back to the back. Hit B and re-pour my planes. Save that. Now we can go ahead back and run the design rules again. All right, is anybody unconnected? No, cancel out of there. All right, so this is what happens. It will catch one way or another that you hook these these vias up in a foolish way. I would have preferred it to say, hey, you shorted this thing out, but that's okay. It still unshorted it for me. Uh, it's weird that you would leave a via to nowhere, but that is certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's an option. At least it's not shorted out. All right, so there's a little side note about vias and making sure that you have a well, a well connected uh, ground plane in your design.